Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk all about the cloud. What is it? How does it work? How do you take advantage of it? And what are the things you need to watch out for? So AJ, we hear a lot about the cloud. It's all anybody seems to want to talk about everywhere you go. So let's start with what is the cloud? Well, quite simply, the cloud is just your applications and services running in a remote facility um, accessible through the, uh, through the internet mm -hmm. um, versus running it in your own data center or on your own laptop or server at home um, and, uh, and using your own network. So that's, at the simplest terms, that's what it is. And how does that work? Well, it's, it's really based upon virtualization of, of the infrastructure. Um, and both the, the compute environment and the storage environment. So rather than having your specific configuration um, within a physical server or a physical storage device, you virtualize that so your compute can run across multiple servers, hundreds, thousands mm -hmm. of servers, and the same thing on the storage side. So that way you can um, ramp up and ramp down your, your in an elastic manner your, your compute and your storage capabilities. So basically what you're saying is, uh, rather than buying a whole bunch of computers or servers for yourself, um, you're renting space on exactly right. You know your cloud providers, thousands or tens of thousands of servers they have there, and you pay for what you need, not, exactly uh, what right. you use. Exactly basically. right. Yes. Okay, all right. And what are some of the advantages then for companies of uh, of uh, using the cloud? Well, number one is the is the elastic nature of it that you are only paying for what you're using, and that it is an on-demand environment. So. Once you've established what you want your cloud environments to be, which you have to configure those, um, but once you've done that, then it, you can replicate those environments uh, you know, on a demand basis. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it allows for significant improvements in productivity because you're not worrying about managing your infrastructure. You're not worrying about managing your, your network and the rest of your uh, controls around access and so forth. It's done, you've, you've established that up front and then you get to leverage that over and over again. Additionally, the cloud management platforms, uh, so the Microsoft, uh, Amazon, and Google, have created additional services that sit on top of just the virtualized compute and storage, and these are application services. So if you want to uh, be able to use data services, as an example, st you know, stand up a database or, or move data within uh, cross applications or from one area to another area, all those services are now available to you through the cloud management platforms. You just have to enable those and you get to leverage them rather than having to install that software and manage it yourself. So productivity is a huge advantage um, to, um, uh, to the cloud. The security controls, so you can build those into your cloud pa patterns mm -hmm. um, so that when you create that environment, or establish that environment, the security controls can be built into it and you can manage that, uh, reducing you know, the complexity of the environment as well as reducing unnecessary variability within the environment, which allows you to provide better control of your environment as well. So basically what you're saying is you get the benefits of the cloud provider's sort of scale and breadth and resources that you might not have yourself, programs they build themselves, you might take advantage of uh, machine learning or AI libraries that they have, exactly. and have yourselves, et cetera. And it sounds like more standardization as well, you know, common security models or configuration of things. Stand like standardization is, is, is foundational and fundamental to the, the way the cloud works um, yeah. because you have to standardize your, your infrastructure environment and standardize your services in order to be able to run those in a dynamic, shared tenancy model. Um, and uh, you, you couldn't do it without the, without the standardization. So that's the public cloud, and we, we sort of get the benefit there. Um, talk about the private cloud. What's the difference between public and private cloud? So private cloud is using the same type of virtualization mm -hmm. uh, technology that you use in the public cloud, but doing it on your own, in your own data centers on-prem. Um, and it, it is still virtualizing your infrastructure, still virtualizing your, your storage. Um, it's just that you're now managing it. You're doing your own cloud management platform. So all of that uh, management of, the, of your infrastructure, you're doing it yourself versus leveraging the, the software and services that, that do it for you in the, uh, in the public cloud. Um, the advantages of a private cloud environment is it's your data center. Mm -hmm. um, so your controls and, and who has access to your data center is, is your employees. Um, and often, you're, you, if you, especially if you have a legacy uh, set of applications that you know, you've, you've had for a number of years, a private cloud will provide you that, that benefit of being close to your legacy applications, so reducing some of the network traffic and 
um, and, and, and allow for higher levels of, of uh, or, or reductions in latency than if you're running in a, in a remote facility of, of the public cloud. So that sounds, um, that sounds great, it sounds expensive. So it sounds like something that would be really be an option for companies that are large, that have the scale and resources to do that. Right? Yes, you have to be able to run your data centers, right. uh, and you have to be able to run your data centers at scale to, to really get the advantage of a private cloud environment. And then the difference between running a private cloud and just running things the way we always have, or any company has, is you get that elasticity, you sort of get the pay for what you use. That on-demand level, but, but within your infrastructure itself in a private cloud environment. Got it, so the company still pays for the entire environment, but the individual users, maybe a subline of business or a business unit or such, only pay for what they use. Right. You it's, effectively become a central provider to the rest that, of the That's exactly right, and you get more efficient use of your, of your infrastructure through a private cloud environment, well, right. through any cloud. Right. And that's why you would use it as, as a private cloud environment, is to get that, that higher levels of efficiency. Got it. And then we also hear about hybrid clouds. So what is that? So hybrid cloud is the ability to run in one cloud and then push workloads into another cloud. So we could be running in our private cloud environment at, at, at the firm, and then we can push some, if we need some additional compute, uh, we can push that off into one of the public cloud environments and spin up an environment there. That's the, the same configuration of the environment that we have in our private cloud. Um, and spin that up to run some workloads in the public cloud. And then when we're done with that level of compute, those spin down, so we're no longer paying for it, and we're just then running again back on-prem. So that's hybrid. You could do that in a, from one public cloud to another public cloud environment as well. That's the ability to push workloads across public cloud environments. So if you, think about, if you think about you're running a program, it's, it's processing away, and all of a sudden there's a lot more volume that comes in, Maybe it's a seasonal uh, sort of a thing, or uh, you know, more volume cleansing for whatever reason. You could sort of burst exactly out into right. another cloud, but just for the time that you need it, and then get rid of it when you're done and come back to what you already and have. Retrench back, yes. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, so we talk about security, right? And security is probably the reason that most people think about as you know, why people aren't using more of the cloud, right? Um, you, one could argue that a private cloud, you get more control over security, public cloud, it's more in somebody else's hands. Let's talk about the security model with the cloud. So the public cloud security um, is a shared security model. The, the public cloud providers, the Googles, mm -hmm. uh, Microsoft, Amazon, they will secure their uh, cloud management platform itself, mm -hmm. their physical data centers, the equipment that's running in those data centers, and the um, system admin access to those, uh, to those environments. They control that and provide that as a service to anybody who's using the cloud. Um, when you use the cloud then for your applications and for your data, you're required to secure that because that's mm -hmm. what you're bringing to the cloud. Um, and they provide you with, uh, the cloud management platforms provide you with tools to do that, uh, services, uh, uh, capabilities around doing your identity and access management controls, encryption controls, et cetera, as well as uh, monitoring and, and alerting controls as well. But you have to configure those correctly in order to have those controls be turned on uh, for your specific requirements. So that's an important point, right? You're not just sort of outsourcing all of the security to a third party, right? You're not, the, cloud's not, the cloud provider's not doing everything, right? You still bear a lot of the responsibility yourself. Right? You do, you yeah. do. And that's why we spend a lot of time up front in securing our cloud patterns themselves. We layer the security in, in into our uh, public cloud patterns and then we make those club, public cloud patterns available to our developers and engineers to use, so we're guaranteed the security that we wanted to have configured into those environments. And we don't allow anybody to change those environments for us. Right. So we know that the encryption and the identity access and controls and so forth are built into, uh, into the environments that we're, that we're uh, establishing. Got it. And I think it's important for people to realize also, especially for smaller companies, you know, the security you get from a cloud provider might be more than what you could do yourself, right? Just given the scale and the resources and the, the, what the cloud providers put into that. Right? That's absolutely true. The standard nature, um, the fact that you've standardized your configuration and you mm -hmm. can standardize your configuration, you know, that, that prescriptive model very high up on the technology stack. So not just your infrastructure, not just your operating system, not just your um, management software that's sitting on top of that, not just your application runtime environment, but you can go all the way up into your either AI environments, your data environments, and so forth. And the fact that you can layer that security in and you can do that in a controlled, standard configuration, 
that allows you to, uh, to have high levels of security. Okay. Uh, fewer things to monitor, th fewer things to check um, as well, um, and that also helps in your security uh, posture as well. What advice would you have for companies that are thinking about uh, you know, moving into the cloud, either building new applications in the cloud or moving existing uh, environments they have? I, I would say get the security right up front. Yeah. Make sure you spend time on your configuration of your environments, and then start small. Start with simple, small applications, your web applications, Java, .NET, et cetera, um, and get that configuration right um, up front. Um, and then make sure you're managing the identity and access as well, um, because you're at, at your weakest link is somebody phishing you or, or getting access, your credentials access, um, to get into your application. Um, but that, uh, start small and start with the layering at that security at the, mm -hmm. uh, right. at the onset. And then you can start to grow your workloads and your volumes, move more data over, and take advantage of some of the higher order services that are, uh, that are available through the, uh, through the cloud. So do you find that companies need to make changes to applications to take advantage of the cloud? Yeah, especially if they have a legacy application base uh, and it's built in more of a, a vertical structure, they need mm -hmm. to decouple it and break it down into smaller components, smaller workloads um, that can run separately and independently uh -huh. um, in a service type oriented structure. Um, and uh, because the cloud is, is a horizontal model, you, it, it, it scales horizontally it, it, with creating additional instances of its compute environment and storage environment. So you want to be able to have your workloads independent so that they can create multiple vari versions of that same workload um, in a horizontal structure. And that allows you then to get that advantage of the, of the public cloud. Got it, more processing power, other things like that, exactly. scale up and scale down. Exactly. As you're saying. Right. Yeah. exactly. So basically what we're saying is, you know, start small, right? Get the security model right. You know, uh, decouple, I think we said, sort of break things down yep. into services. Break them down into smaller pieces. Make sure you take advantage yes. of that, right? Yes, okay. absolutely. Great. AJ, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. If you want to learn more, you can tune into this episode of the Tech Trends Podcast.